Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Wildcat Insider, our weekly in-depth look at Villanova Athletics, as we'll continue to chat with our great staff. I'm Nick Montaigne. It's great to have you with us. Today, we're joined by Denise Dillon, our brand new women's basketball coach. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Great to see thanks. you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Nick. Yeah. Boy, I'd like to really know how excited you were, Denise, when uh, Mark Jackson offered you the job, our terrific athletic director. Uh, just a great chance, I'm sure, to coach your alma mater. It must have been a wonderful moment for you, huh? Oh, absolutely. Uh, obviously, coming off uh, a season that ended abruptly, you go through the process just getting to uh, communicate with the different people at Villanova. Um, Mark and Lynn so involved in the hiring process. Uh, yeah, I was elated when I, I got that phone call uh, that they wanted to move in the direction for me to be the next uh, women's basketball coach. So excited for uh, what's ahead. Um, I was extremely excited about a month ago yeah. when it all started. Sure. Uh, Denise, you'll take over for Harry Peretta, who spent 42 years on the main line. He taught you a lot about hoops, a lot about life, I'm sure. You played for him. You coached under him for a little bit uh, at Villanova. What were the biggest takeaways you got from Harry over the years? Uh, well, it's, uh, the list is long, so it's <laughs> not uh, something that you can just sum up in a brief conversation. But uh, certainly the lessons uh, I carried with me, as you mentioned, through life and uh, mm -hmm. in this profession. Uh, there's no greater teacher uh, of the game than Harry Peretta. And I often say it, my family is uh, well aware, uh, when I say where would I be without Harry Peretta, I wholeheartedly mean it. Uh, he was uh, one who really uh, saw talent that I had as a, a young athlete in high school and uh, you know, coached me through to have a, a solid career and then uh, really taught me the game in order to uh, propel my professional career as a coach and just, Year after year, the conversations, you know, at a daily basis, after games, throughout practices, uh, he's just, he's a great one to talk basketball with. So you're always learning. Yeah, he's taught me a lot as well through yeah. the years, that's for sure. Uh, Denise is a big five and Villanova Hall of Famer. You spent 17 seasons at Drexel, four CAA titles. Denise, what will be the biggest adjustment for you personally in switching jobs and taking this new opportunity? What do you think will be the, the biggest hurdle for you? Well, uh, I mean, it's starting over, uh, which I think is – exciting you know it's the yeah. change and that's why i think you embrace the change for that challenge uh, but just that reminder you know i honestly feel i have to remind myself that i've been uh coaching for 20 years i was 17 years as a head coach uh, but that element of excitement of feeling like it's brand new and this is my first year i, I think that's important it's like you're reinventing your yourself in order to uh start over uh somewhere else so uh, just continuing to stay the course, stay patient uh, within uh, the process, and obviously recognizing the differences we're dealing with right now and being okay with that. You know, just continuing the communication with uh, the uh, staff that we assembled and uh, the current players and those who are coming in. So I'm enjoying uh, building those relationships, but it really is the biggest jump is realizing I've done this for a long time. This is brand new. Uh, Denise, I've watched your teams play for years. Uh, what stood out for me in the broadcasting world covering women's hoops every single year is Drexel's scoring defense. When I'm preparing to do any kind of broadcast and look at different teams, I look at national rankings, and every single week I see Drexel in the top 10. Every single season, uh, looking back over the decade that just ended, you had three top 10 finishes nationally in scoring defense, seven times in the top 20. You were number one in 2018, 2019 allowing just 50 points per game. Why was the defense so good every year at Drexel? Well, first and foremost, I have to commend uh, our associate head coach, Amy Mallon, who mm -hmm. uh, really set that tone uh, from day one when we started working together, just the importance of uh, really uh, assembling a strong defensive team. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think my understanding, you know, of how I always presented it. I, I feel that you can always be a good defensive player. You know, there's different levels of skill set that each player uh, separates themselves with on the offensive end. But when it right. comes down to getting on the floor, and it's something I've 
you know, preached at different clinics, talking with young kids, you always give yourself a chance to get on that court. You're the player that uh, your teammates want to have out on the floor if you're committed to playing defense. And you're showing you're a selfless player. So it carries on uh, both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, just that team mentality. You know, also, Nikki, I have to admit, there's nights really struggle to score the basketball. But if you're a good defensive team, you always give yourself a chance uh, to win some games. So just, you know, staying uh, competitive uh, year in and year out with that mentality has, has certainly helped my career. Yeah, as I say, defense travels. You're right, keeps you in every single game. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Your new staff is complete. Uh, Joe Mullaney stays on, a terrific teacher of the game. The former Villanova players have just adored him through the years. He's a wonderful person, a great man inside uh, women's basketball. How big was keeping him and Mimi Riley to have some Villanova people around? Yeah, it, it certainly helped. Um, and even more so with uh, you know, the situation we're in with, uh, you know, the players feeling a little bit isolated of not uh, really knowing me, uh, Coach Baker and Coach Woolley. So when they, when I announced that Coach Joe was staying on board in a Zoom, you could just see their excitement and celebration. Uh, and Mimi has just done such a great job of uh, keeping us in the loop with uh, all the players and everything that needs to be done and just a st steady force. Uh, you know, Coach Joe, I learned so much from you. I talk about Harry, but uh, Coach Joe was right there uh, along with him. He was coaching at St. John's when I was a player, so I was familiar with that. And he came to Villanova the year uh, I graduated. So we, I started uh, as an assistant coach and uh, Coach Joe was teaching me a lot about uh, inner office stuff and on the court stuff. So I've learned so much and I feel like it's been a seamless transition, Nick. It's been so nice just talking with him about the game and the players and what we want to do. Uh, it, it seems like we were happy, you know, just finished the conversation of uh, 18 years ago. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I, I'm really excited about it. I was happy to hear, you know, when Harry had mentioned his uh, retirement, I asked Joe, I said, you're not thinking about retiring, are you? And he said, no, no, I, I want to do this. <laughs> Uh, for a few more years, so I'm excited, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Baker, we were talking about her. Michelle Woolley, good recruiting expert from South Carolina, will join you on the staff. Uh, will we see Denise Dillon recruit Philly? Will we see your staff recruit California, expand out to Texas, the Midwest? Uh, what do you think a Denise Dillon team could look like in five years? Yeah, well, I like how you say that. You know, there is a time frame um, behind all of it. Uh, first and foremost, of course, you want – uh, the best players from your area uh, staying in the area. So uh, we will uh, continue to pursue and uh, convince them that this is the place to be at Villanova. Uh, I think it's been nice. It's worked for us at Drexel, and it's also worked nicely at Villanova with some of the international players. So we want to continue to see that uh, happening. So it's opening it up, yeah, nationally. I think Mary Woolley can certainly add that uh, element in her understanding. She's been in a number of different places, and obviously – uh, just finishing up there at South Carolina, which is the best in women's basketball right now. So we're really yeah. excited uh, <laughs> to have her on board. So, yeah, we will expand out. But as you said, first and foremost, get the best in the area for sure. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, international players. You had really terrific kids. It seems like year after year at Drexel, Gabriella Marginian sticks mm -hmm. out. Great European player. Sarah Kern and Bailey Greenberg were terrific. Uh, what's the key to getting these good players and develop them, developing them over the years? Well, I, I do feel that it's uh, those coachable players and it's building those relationships through the recruiting process that you realize they want more. You know, they're, they're not that player who thinks like, oh, I got it. I'm going to step on the floor in college and it's all going to come together. You can uh, just see the mentality. And when I say wanting more, wanting to pursue that, that pro career uh, before they move into um, the, the professional area of what they studied in college. You know, Gabrielle Marginian at Drexel, she was someone who uh, would run through a wall for her team. And you knew you could demand the most from her. And you, you saw Sarah Karen who felt – uh, I want to play uh, professionally overseas. So continuing to uh, develop different areas of her game so she could do that. You know, they're the conversations I'm having with our current players at Villanova, and I couldn't be more excited. When a player wants to continue on uh, in the game of basketball, you know they're going to look uh, each and every day to get a little bit better so they have the great success, uh, their team successful nationally, and it carries over to the next level. So 
we just need to get on campus, Nick, and get started because we get so fired up when we talk about uh, what's ahead and what we have to work with. Yeah, and I saw you beat Harry Peretta this year. Your defense was great. You held uh, the Villanova's team in check, and uh, now you'll be coaching those players. Mm -hmm. And I've heard you talk a little bit uh, over the last month about some of the conversations you've been able to have with the players and obviously Zoom chats and FaceTiming and phone calls and texting. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the biggest uh, way you've been able to connect with the current Villanova players and how to build that relationship during this tough time? Yeah, I think uh, it's been – the conversations have been great and just again on the phone but i think the zooms have been uh the most natural uh and again i think that the kids of today they're not kids but the uh, young people today they're they're used to that you know everything they do is the facetime on the phone i wouldn't really think to make a phone call and, and have it as a facetime so it's so natural for them and uh, we as coaches are becoming much more comfortable with it. But I really enjoyed the individual Zooms that we had. It was myself and another coach, and we would have them on just talking about uh, the season, like what they felt uh, they accomplished this season, what they were looking to work on. Obviously, they're on their own, so that accountability is so big right now and self-motivation. And then what they, they see uh, they want to develop within the future or how we're going to work together. So I've been really enjoying those conversations. You know, again, to know them. I am fortunate because I am familiar with a lot of these players, you know, through the recruiting process, but also us playing each other. So you could see a little bit on the floor of what uh, they have to offer. But I, I really feel like sky's the limit. We haven't even tapped into uh, some of their talents. So it's going to be it's going to be exciting. I'm really fortunate and uh, happy to be working with such a great group. Yeah. Let's look at the offense for a little bit. You beat Villanova this year. Uh, Matty Segrist had a fantastic rookie season. Mm -hmm. Big East freshman of the year. Most of the year she was leading the conference in scoring just under 20 points per game. She put 24 against Drexel. Now you'll be able to coach her. Right. So uh, a standout player. What will the offense look like and how nice will it be to have a power score like Matty Segrist? Yeah, well, it, it certainly is nice. I mean, not only do you look at the, the numbers, like her, her point – uh, contribution, but her percentage was so great. So you just see the efficiency in, in her game. Uh, and I think her having such a strong year, you know, will only build that confidence. Now she has to understand she's not going to be a secret. So it, it comes out, you know, developing uh, some different areas and, and being strategic. She's always going to uh, have the best defender on her. So, you know, conversations with her, again, what I'm telling myself, so re remain patient within this uh, development, you know, the demand, is great in what you want to do and what you want to accomplish, but she can just offer so much in so many different areas. I mean, you just light up thinking where you can put her uh, on the offensive end within the, you know, five out the continuity of what we do, but adding some different elements to it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we talked to her about, you know, a little bit of the inside game, like not shying away from uh, some of that contact around the basket, real high percentage shots around the basket. So, you know, we want it. <laughs> Uh, continue to use her range but yeah she just uh, she's the one we talk about when I say the sky's the limit she yeah. has so much to offer yeah can't wait to see that for sure uh, Denise through the years at Drexel how did you adapt and change the most and how vital is it to keep on keeping up with the Joneses as they say in the world of women's college basketball coaching uh, what's the key to staying with the times uh, I would say you know I use the term like uh, reinventing yourself like each year recognizing what you have uh what where the players you know are most comfortable what their strengths are you know and this it's it's been it's almost like a three-year cycle you know i looked uh one group that we had uh we had three thousand point scorers graduate and they were all great three-point shooters so we're coming off a year like 22 wins i'm thinking whoo what you know what are we going to do and i really enjoyed that off season of looking at the players we have returning and thinking, okay, how can we help them uh, not feel like this is going to be a rebuild season? Instead, let's move forward and have an even better year. And I was fortunate because they had that mentality. Like, we, we don't want people to think this is a rebuild season. So it, it became more of the slips. It became more of the pick and roll game. Uh, they, they weren't three-point shooters per se. We had maybe one out there, but uh, they were just much better, like power, attacking the basket, back to the basket. So just doing that each and every year, instead of thinking like, well, this is what we do, 
and forcing players, you know, it, it's what you tell players. You don't, you don't want to put them in a position of failure. So you have to make sure that you're uh, working the offense to their strengths and the defensive end as well. We were able to press some years, other years we couldn't, we just didn't have uh, the horses to do so. So it's really, it's really great. Like just reinventing uh, yourself without making it too complicated. You know, you're not reinventing the game. You're just making sure you keep it in check uh, of knowing what you have in order to be successful. Have you been able to decorate your new office at Villanova? What's it look like? Have you been able to go in there at all? No, of course I know what it looks like. I visited Harry enough. Yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, I nope, haven't even uh, got my stuff from the Drexel office yet. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm abiding by all these rules of, yeah. Uh, yeah, staying until I guess we have another week or so here in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And then we'll take care of uh, what's necessary. When they let us on campus, I'll go. In the meantime, Here's my home office. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Denise, welcome to Villanova. Welcome back to Villanova. Can't wait to see the season start in November. Uh, best of luck to you and the staff and the players through the summer and once the fall gets going. And uh, let's go. We'll have a great fall once uh, we get through all this. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Nick. This is great. Denise Dillon, our brand new Villanova women's basketball coach, joining us. Um, Nick Montagna for your Wildcat Insider. We'll see you next time, everyone. Thanks for joining us.